Hello everyone, hope you are doing absolutely fantastic. My name is Ritraj Kaushik and today we are going to discuss about Thompson sampling. In our last video, we talked about upper confidence bound based approach which was a deterministic approach. In this video, we are going to talk about a sampling based approach. This will be the last video about uh, Maltium bandits and after this video, we are going to discuss about dynamic programming and Markov decision process. Before learning about Thomson sampling, we have to learn about something called beta distribution because we'll be using this distribution uh, when we do Thomson sampling. So you can see the expression of uh, beta distribution. Uh, it has two uh, parameters called shape parameters. Those are alpha and beta. So you can tune these alpha and beta parameters to have a uh, specific shape of the beta distribution for example in this picture you can see that uh, we are taking alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1 and we are having a flat distribution and this is 1 and probability of uh, any value between 0 and 1 is um, 1 in this distribution now you can see the second distribution here it has alpha value equal to 3 beta value equal to 3 so it's uh, it's now looks like a uh, kind of uh, gaussian distribution uh, so you can see one thing here that if beta and alpha value is equal then you get a symmetric distribution around the point 0 0.5 here so at the point 0 0.5 it has the higher probability probability value than the other points and if alpha value is la uh, small and beta value is large then uh, you can see in this distribution it has more probability towards zero than one so uh, the probability is shifted towards uh, uh, the zero value uh, and the uh, probability is lower lower towards the value one Again, you can see here, uh, we are taking alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 5. We are also, we are getting a distribution which is shifted towards 0 value. And uh, we are getting lower probability towards 1. So, this probability distribution is useful in Thomson sampling because we will be estimating this alpha and beta value uh, uh, continuously for the distributions and will change the shape of the distribution of the Q value for the for a particular uh, bandit as we get more and more samples from the bandit uh, or the slot machine will shift this distribution accordingly by changing this alpha and beta value so that we can move towards more and more accurate distribution of the Q value here is an interactive animation of beta distribution as you can see uh, here alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1 and we are get, getting a flat distribution like uniform distribution but as we increase the value of alpha you can see how the shape of the distribution is changing see so it is more concentrated towards the uh, higher values now and let's see what happens if, if we uh, if we make uh, both alpha and beta equal to 2 so now uh, the mean is uh, approximately 0 0.5 in this distribution so now again we can change the value of alpha so see so when alpha is more than beta then the probability distribution is more concentrated towards the higher values and uh, when beta is more than alpha then it is concentrated towards the lower values uh, of uh, theta theta is the input the this axis the x axis i think we have now sufficient understanding of uh, beta distribution to proceed to thomson sampling so for thomson sampling we assume initial distribution of q whether that is action value uh, for each of the bandits so we assume initial probability distribution we, uh, we took a wide distribution for all the bandits and we're assuming the alpha and beta value to be 2 for each of the bandits then what we'll do we will sample a Q from each of the distribution 
we sampled uh, a queue from uh, the first distribution uh, then the second distribution and third distribution and as we can see in the first distribution uh, the sample value we got in the first distribution is maximum so what we have to do we will play in that bandit so let's say we play on that machine and we won the game so we got positive reward so now we saw a positive reward on the first bandit so we have to update the alpha and beta value so as we won the game so we update the alpha value by plus one and we keep the beta value as it is so we updated the alpha and beta value for bandit one and we can see that here is the new distribution uh, our new alpha value is three and beta value is two here so the distribution a bit uh, the distribution is a bit sharper now compared to the other distributions uh, now again we have to sample this is a, a second iteration again we have to sample uh, q values from each of the distribution let let's say we got these values and we can see here in this case the uh, value we got in the second distribution is maximum so we'll play on that bandit machine and let's say we lost the game in this case and we got zero reward so now we have to update the alpha and beta value according to the rule so we are adding plus one with beta and we are keeping alpha as it is so after updation we have a different distribution now uh, for the second bandit which is uh, shifted a bit towards the lower values of uh, q and uh, these this will serve as a new prior for the uh, second bandit and if we proceed like this for several iterations our distribution will be sharper and sharper and will move closer and closer to the actual q values of the machine so after sufficient updates uh, now if we sample q values from this distribution so it is more likely that we'll get higher values from the bandit which has actually higher q value so in this case you can see if we sample randomly any q values from these distributions we'll get higher values from here and it is less likely that we'll get very high values in this uh, in this bandit and here also so what will happen we'll play most of the time here because most of the time we we'll get higher value here so in this way we use thompson sampling to solve multi -arm bandit problem i hope you have understood all the techniques we have discussed about multi -arm bandit problems and from the next video onwards we are going to talk about markov decision process and dynamic programming i'm really excited to make those videos so i hope you like my videos if you like the video then give your thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you get notification when i upload new videos bye bye